All right, uh, welcome back to the Green Ninja Climate Science Series. Um, we're going to be transitioning here from a little bit of um, kind of climate science 101 videos to more like frequently asked uh, question type videos. So our first kind of frequently asked question is, how can there be global warming um, when last year was so cold? And so I don't literally mean uh, last year, but I just mean at any given location, wherever you might live, you may experience a month or a few months or even a year or longer that is that was pretty cold relative to your average, um, in spite the fact in spite of the fact that the world's temperature has increased um, pretty substantially. So I want to kind of ask or look into why this can be the case. So um, to set this up, I want to show you uh, another graph of uh, globally averaged surface temperature over land. This is from the Berkeley Earth Surface Temperature data set. And so what we're showing, what they're showing here is from the 1750s to the uh, 2000s, we've seen an increase in temperature of about uh, 3 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, but I want you to notice the difference between uh, the red line, which is a 10-year moving average. So and, uh, each single dot on here is an average of, the, of 10 years total, versus the 12-month moving average, which um, is showing you the average you know, for each given kind of year, um, or a moving average for each year. And so what you see is that um, we have these wiggles um, from year to year in the globally averaged uh, surface temperature, and this is mostly due to um, El Nino and La Nina conditions, which we, which we won't really get into. But you can see that um, the wiggles uh, in the globally averaged uh, surface temperature over land are relatively small compared to the overall increase in temperature. So just to take an example, uh, the coldest years in the 2000s were still warmer than the warmest years in the 1980s because the rate of warming of the long-term warming is, uh, is a lot larger than the year-to-year -year, uh, variability. But what happens is this is not the case at any given location where you might live. And so this gets to the point of um, why, you know, given locations can be cold in spite of the globe getting warmer. So um, just to give you an idea of how this works, uh, let's just take a very kind of basic cartoon look at the Earth's surface. So let's say this is um, water here, and we have some continents here. And let's say that you live right at this point. So um, nobody lives in the global average, right? Everyone just lives at one single point on the surface of the Earth. And so if you live here, um, your temperature is not just, not every single point on the Earth is uh, the same temperature as the global average, right? So what happens is uh, your temperature is controlled by the way that uh, cold and warm air masses might be moving over your uh, given location. So let's say that right now the Earth's temperature, what you're looking at, is 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, you know, in this cold air blob, let's say it's 40 degrees Fahrenheit, and in this warm air blob, it's uh, 80 degrees Fahrenheit, and the rest of it is 60 degrees Fahrenheit, and, you know, these approximately equal each other, so the average is 60. Um, now, what's going to happen at your given location in terms of temperature if these air masses start to move around, which is actually what does happen in the real Earth system. So we have cold fronts and warm fronts, which are just cold and warm air masses uh, moving around the surface of the planet. So let's say that um, the cold air moves to the south and the warm air moves to the north. So first, the warm air moves over your given location. So you went from uh, 60 to 80 degrees, and now back to 60, and now the cold air moves over your location, so now you're down to 40 degrees. Um, so your given location experienced a big swing in temperature over that time period. But what happened to the globally averaged temperature here? Well, nothing, right? Because I didn't change um, the shape of these two air masses. I didn't, I'll, I'll just say for the sake of argument that the temperature stayed exactly the same of these two air masses. So what happened is I just moved them around. And so if you average over the entire surface of the planet, you don't get any change. But at any given location, like at this location, you did get a big change. So what you see when you look at 
um, the graphs of surface temperature over time from any given location is you can have really cold years uh, in spite of the fact that uh, the globe may be really warm. So here's an example of that um, from 2010. So 2010 was the warmest year uh, on record in the instrumental record. And what this map is showing is locations on the globe that were above average and locations of the globe that were below average in terms of temperature for 2010. So keep in mind, 2010 is the warmest year on record um, in the instrumental record, so going back to the 1800s. Um, but that does not mean that every single location on the surface of the planet was warmer than average. So if you look at central Russia and Mongolia, you look at Europe, you look at uh, central Australia, you look at parts of South America, you look at Florida, those areas actually experienced uh, colder than average temperatures despite the fact that the globe overall set the record for the warmest uh, temperature on record. And so another way to look at that is in terms of time series plots at, at given locations. So um, remember, here's our graph of the, of the time series for the globally average uh, land temperature. And just to remind you, we saw an increase of about 3 degrees Fahrenheit um, overall since the, since, the 18, since the 17 and 1800s. Um, but now let's look at a graph from a given location. So let's look at Washington, D.C., now, what you'll see here is that Washington, D.C. has experienced about the same amount of warming relative to the 17 and 1800s uh, as the globe has. It's basically increased by about 3 degrees Fahrenheit in Washington, D.C. Um, over that time period. However, when you look at this 12-month moving average, uh, these wiggles are way more intense than at the global average. And this is because of this issue of warm air masses and cold air masses moving over your location at any given time. So what this means, going back to you know, our question of how can, la how can there be global warming when last year is so cold, well, like let's take a look at right here. This might be, say, 2008 in Washington, D.C. That year was relatively cold compared to the years in the late 90s and, and early 2000s. And it was even cold relative to, um, relative to years in the early 1900s. Uh, say, like in the 1930s, perhaps, it was a, a lot warmer than in 2008 in Washington, D.C. And it's because of this issue of warm air masses and cold air masses kind of moving around the surface of the Earth and causing weather at any given location. Uh, so it's kind of harder to see uh, the increase in temperature at any given location than it is to see the temperature increase in the global average, because when you average over the globe, you essentially get rid of this, um, this uh, movement of air around the surface of the Earth that causes these uh, intense uh, wiggles and kind of obscures the global warming uh, signal. So this isn't just the case with Washington, D.C. When you look at all sorts of different um, places around the surface of the Earth, you see that um, overall the temperature increase in Mumbai and Sydney and Dubai and Rio de Janeiro is around 3 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, just like the global average. But the noise, the noisiness of the data, the wiggles in the data are a lot higher in any given location than they are in the global average. So it just means that wherever you live, um, you're perfectly capable of having a pretty cold year, uh, any given year, in spite of the fact of long-term warming. Um, and it doesn't mean that, that your area is not warming. Um, it's, you know, it's just, it's just, uh, it just happens because cold air um, can move over your location uh, for a long period of time. It could be just, you know, a couple days. It could be a couple weeks. Uh, it could be as long as a year where you have colder than average weather. Um, and it really doesn't mean anything unless you, you know, come up with a uh, data set like this and see, <clears throat> okay, how is the long-term change in temperature um, reacting? Uh, you can't just pick out any given year and, and draw any conclusions from that. So hopefully that helps uh, explain a little bit how uh, any given location can have a cold year and it's not inconsistent with the idea that the globe is warming or even that your location is warming uh, in the long term.